Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Recently, I posted a video showing how to integrate the Crestron TSW touch panels with Home Assistant, specifically how to display the Home Assistant dashboard right on the Crestron screen. The video got quite a bit of attention and a bunch of you reached out and left comments asking the same question. How are you controlling the brightness and power of the panel directly from Home Assistant? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it, how to turn the screen on or off, control the backlight, and how I even do it automatically using automations with Node-RED and Home Assistant. So let's jump straight in. For this tutorial, we need to understand the different versions of Home Assistant and what they do. I'm running Home Assistant as a virtual machine on Proxmox, but the key thing is that I'm running the Home Assistant operating system. This is the supervisor, which is Home Assistant, and the built-in add-on store that you get. The Home Assistant operating system runs on a Raspberry Pi, virtual machines, or even bare metal if you wanted to run it on its own machine. It's super easy to install, and it's the version I recommend for stuff like this when you need plugins and add-ons and stuff. Stuff, it makes things really easy. The second version is Home Assistant Supervised. Essentially, it's the supervisor and core installed on top of Debian. This is usually what you'll see if you're running an LXC container instead of Proxmox. It's not quite as powerful as the Home Assistant OS, but it's still pretty capable. This version, I believe, still has the add-on store, so if you're running the supervised version of Home Assistant, you should be good. The next option is the Home Assistant Container, which is the sort of lighter version of Home Assistant, but less featured. This is just the Home Assistant core running in Docker. This is popular with LXC containers and stuff like that running in Proxmox. Um, it does not include the add-on store. So if you're running the Home Assistant Container, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll just have to take a couple extra steps to get Node-RED running inside of Home Assistant. Now with all that out of the way, we've figured out which version of Home Assistant we're running. Now we need to figure out the add-on situation. For this whole communication system to work, we only need one add-on, and it's a really powerful one called Node-RED. If you've never heard of Node-RED, it is a visual automation tool that lets you wire devices and APIs and services together using a drag and drop interface. It's really nice. It's built on JavaScript and Node.js, so you'll feel at home when you're building your scripts and stuff, and it works perfectly with Home Assistant, which is why I chose it for my installation here. Okay, so here's the question, where does Node-RED run? Well, if you're running the Home Assistant operating system with the add-on store baked in, you can come straight down here to the settings button, add-ons, and you can add the Node-RED plugin in here. I'm not gonna cover how to do this and how to set up Node-RED, there's plenty of tutorials online, but basically you just need to have the Node-RED add-on installed, and then you need to come over here to devices and services, add integration, Node-RED companion, and you can add that in. I've already configured it and set that up, so we're pretty much done there, but it's really easy to set it up. You can probably get it going in five or 10 minutes. Okay, so jumping into Node-RED here, you can see I've already got a flow set up to control this panel, but we're gonna ignore all of this and set up a brand new flow. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So looking on the left side here, you can see we've got a couple Home Assistant categories here. This top one here is gonna be the API with Home Assistant. This is gonna be how you can get information from Home Assistant into Node-RED if you want to use your automations in Node-RED. Now scrolling down a little here, you can see we have Home Assistant entities. This is gonna be how you get buttons and sliders and information from Node-RED back into Home Assistant and control and everything else baked into that. This is how we are going to actually control the Crestron panels from our dashboard. So looking at this flow here, you can see I have a couple switches here, I have a couple numbers here, which are gonna be sliders, faders, however you wanna uh, look at those. And those are controlling these functions here, which are actually JavaScript code that then write commands to send to my Symmetrix uh, DSP for audio, right? So if we look inside one of these, we're gonna do a PC volume here. This is the volume that controls my computer input on the DSP. So this is going to show up in Home Assistant as a number, zero to 100. And anytime I change the value in my dashboard, it's gonna send its new value into this function here, which then takes the value, does some magic to make it work properly for my DSP, and then builds the command and sends it, right? So that may look a little complicated, but don't worry, the Crestron panels make this really easy for us. So jumping into a new flow here, you can see this is probably what yours looks like. We're gonna go ahead and create a new switch right here. Okay, I'm gonna double click on the switch, give it a name. This name only affects what it shows up as in Node-RED. Don't worry, this has nothing to do with Home Assistant yet. I'm gonna name this Power. 
Now, under the entity config, you're probably not gonna have any options if you haven't used Node-RED before. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new one here. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name. This is the name you'll see inside of Home Assistant. Now you're gonna go ahead and select the server. I have two in here. I think they do the same thing. I'm not quite sure how that happened. You should only have one server. Now under the device option, you likely won't have any devices yet. So we're gonna create a new one here. I'm gonna call this YouTube Crestron. Don't worry about the model or software or anything like that. You can just give it a name up here. Go ahead and add it there. And now we can give it a friendly name if we'd like to. So I'm gonna call this Display Power. And you can give it an icon if you want to. This is gonna use the MDI icons, I believe. So it's the same as Home Assistant. Don't worry about the picture, category, or device class. You can fill those out if you'd like, but we really don't have to worry about those for this tutorial. Go ahead and add that there. And it's gonna bring us back to the main switch edit screen here. And we wanna turn on the output on state change. What this switch is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that when you toggle the switch on or off, it sends a signal out that will then activate whatever is uh, attached to the on or off uh, signal from it, right? So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit here and find the function node here. We're gonna go ahead and add in two of these. And we're gonna connect the switch on to function one and the switch off to function two. And inside of function one, now what we're gonna do in here is type in message.payload space equals space. And then this is where we can actually build the command that's gonna get sent to the Crestron panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and add quotes here. We're gonna do standby on, standby off. This is a little counterintuitive, but essentially this turns off the standby function which wakes the display. So this is basically a power on command. And then you can go ahead and add in another block here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a backslash R, backslash N. If you don't know what this is, this is basically sending an enter key, a new line key, and so that forces the command to go through. The Crestron panels don't usually require this, but I generally add it just to be safe because some devices do and other ones don't. So now we've gone ahead and set that up. I'm gonna go ahead and copy all this text here because we're gonna reuse it for the power off option here. And we're gonna change the standby off to on. And so this is gonna turn on standby, which is putting the display to sleep, turning everything off. Go ahead and hit done. And now we need to figure out how to get this to talk to the Crestron panel. So now all we're gonna do is come over here to the hamburger menu in the top right. And you're gonna see a manage palette button here. Go ahead and click on that. And this step will require network access. Make sure Home Assistant has access to the internet. We're gonna jump over here to the install tab here, which is gonna give us the option to install and add extra functionality into Node-RED, which is a really cool feature. We're gonna go ahead and search for SSH here. And the one I have installed here is all the way at the bottom. It's called SSH v3. There are several options in here that you can choose from. I haven't really played with them too much, but the one that I've had really good luck with is SSH v3 here at the bottom. So I recommend using that. It allows some extra functionality that some of the other ones don't have. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here on the left side after installing that, and you should see a new SSH v3 option. If you don't see that, you can reload your browser and it should uh, show up for you. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up here. I like to put it in the top right. And we're gonna go ahead and connect both of these into the SSH v3 node. Go ahead and double click on that, add a new server. You can name this whatever you want. For the host name here, you wanna go ahead and type in the IP address of your Crestron panel. And the port is gonna be 22, assuming SSH is running on your Crestron panel and you're gonna set your username and password. Now, this isn't gonna work if you don't have authentication set up on your Crestron panel. The newer 70 series panels like mine do require authentication to be enabled in order for you to use the panel. If you have an older 60 series panel or below, you don't have to enable authentication to use the panel, but if you wanna control it using a third party control system like this, you're gonna need authentication because SSH requires it in this case. Go ahead and hit the deploy button up here in the top right. And now if we come down here to settings, devices and services, Node-RED companion, you can see we have a brand new YouTube Crestron option with the display power switch. You can go ahead and turn this off and you'll see your display will turn off. And if we turn this back on, your Crestron panel should wake up. Okay, so we've figured out how to set the power on the panel. How do we change the brightness on the panel? 
it's actually pretty easy. Jumping back into our flow here, you can see we've got our power thing that we just set up. We're gonna go ahead and drag in a new number option here, which is gonna be a slider, which will let us pick from zero to 100. Go ahead and double click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one brightness for this tutorial. Now I'm guessing you're not gonna have any entity configs because you haven't set up a number before. So we'll go ahead and click the plus icon there. We're gonna call this display brightness and we'll go ahead and fill in the same thing for the friendly name. And then under server, you can pick your home assistant server again. And for the device, since we've already created our YouTube Crestron option, we can just select that again. Now, if you want to, you can fill some of this stuff out. You totally don't have to, but we'll go ahead and set our minimum value to 20 just for this tutorial and the max value will set to 80. You can also set your steps, so we'll do 10. So the slider will move up and down by 10 each time you change it. We'll go ahead and click add now, click done. And now we're gonna drag in another function node here to actually build the SSH command being sent to the Crestron panel. Go ahead and connect these two together. Double click on that function node. I've actually left all the function stuff in the description below for you guys to check out just to make your life a little bit easier. But essentially what this is doing is it's taking the value which is coming from brightness here and we're gonna call that right here in our command. So it's brightness space and then the number we set and then the new line command right there. And it's gonna return that message there which is sending it on to the next thing which in this case is our panel. So we'll go ahead and drag that to connect it. Hit deploy there in the top right. And if we jump back over here to settings, devices and services, and we find our Crestron panel, you can see we now have a brightness slider here. And if you change this, you should see the brightness on your Crestron panel changing. And you can see since we set some of those details earlier, it tops out at 80 and goes down to 20. And you can see it's jumping up in groups of 10 there. So pretty awesome. So now I've showed you guys how to get the power and brightness working inside of Home Assistant. Uh, if you want to add other commands to control your Crestron panel, it's pretty easy to do so. You can probably base it on the existing stuff I've shown you in this video. But if you guys have any questions, don't forget to leave them down below in the comments section. I'll try and get back to as many as I can. That's it guys. Uh, let me know down below if this video helped you out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.